And Tara Nelson joins me now, anchor CTV News at 6 in Calgary. Uh, Tara, great to see you. This is, uh, I mean, it really seemed like with this case, things kind of just happened, started to happen very, very quickly as more information was coming in. So what more do we know now about the suspect and now, of course, this property that was being searched? Hi, Angie. Well, the property itself uh, is very large. It's about yeah. a 10 acre acreage. It's about 30 or 40 minutes east of Calgary. It's quite rural. Uh, the homeowners who live there uh, actually on Thursday were at work and they happened to notice through their ring um, doorbell camera that police were at the door and so they raced home from work to see what was going on. They were barred from entering the property and told that there was now a massive police investigation under, uh, underway at their property. They had to go stay somewhere else for five days. What police were looking into was an outbuilding on this property. They had been renting an outbuilding uh, to the suspect, a 59-year-old man. Um, the outbuilding, it appears he was using for work, maybe something to do with vehicles. There were lots of vehicles around the building, but it appears that he also lived in that building. And that's where the bulk of this investigation mm. uh, for several days was centered around that building and in the area around that building. So we know he is a 59-year-old man. He's lived there for about a year and a half, not quite two years. Mm -hmm. The couple who own the house say police did come to the house about a year ago asking about him. They said they have no sense of whether that could be connected to what's going on now. It doesn't seem to be because police told us yesterday that the pieces of this didn't really start to come together until last month and that was when they heard from the victims and then they started piecing this whole story together to to get the bigger picture before we talk about you know the victims and of course uh, their brave effort to to go to police do we know what kind of evidence was seized from that building well <clears throat> pardon me Sorry, as I say, they were there for five days yeah and this is a very big property so they were going through the outbuilding they had a grid search going on, um, going through all of the fields around the building. Police tell us yesterday that they seized about a thousand pieces of evidence. So this could take months and months for them to go through. They also confirmed that they did have a cadaver dog there at the scene. They didn't want to discuss yesterday what specifically, of course, they were looking for, or what mm -hmm. they may have found. Uh, but they will be going through all of this evidence now. And they confirm that this might not be the only location that they need to search. So yeah. this investigation, as big as it was for these last five days, this could just be the tip of the iceberg of what they are looking for in relation to this case. So with that, what more do we know with regards to the victims? Of course, three women coming forward to police, giving them information, which really kind of really sort of started to, to, to prompt a lot of this uh, in further furthering the investigation. That's right. Well, these women all work in Calgary's sex trade. Um, the alleged incidents date back to 2021, um, so happened over the last 18 months, right up until uh, March of this year. Um, we know that they did go to police, and that's something that police really wanted to point out yesterday, mm -hmm. just how brave it was for them to come forward, for all three of them to come forward and tell them what happened. And they really sort of credit the relationship that's happening between the patrol officers in that area and the women who might be working in this community, uh, that they have built some trust up with them and some sensitivity with them that the women felt that they had the ability to come forward yeah. um, and to let them know what had happened. And now what they're really asking for is, are there any other women who recognize this suspect who right. may have had something similar happen to them? Uh, are there more victims out there? That's yeah. what they want to know now. Yeah, exactly. It is, this is, as you say, it's going to be a massive, uh, a massive investigation that's going to take some time. It also, um, <laughs> has eerily very disturbing similarities to the Robert Picton case from 20 years ago in BC. It really does. This was about 21 years ago. It was 2002 when police descended on that Port Coquitlam pig farm. At the time, they were there um, serving a warrant for illegal weapons. And as they started searching the property, uh, many Canadians will remember that they started coming across evidence yeah. uh, that would have belonged to missing women from the sex trade industry on Vancouver's downtown east side. Uh, and they spent almost two years on that property looking for evidence. Uh, in the end, by 2007, Robert Picton was convicted of six counts of second degree murder. He was actually charged with uh, the deaths of another 20 women. Mm -hmm. I think it was up to about 27 uh, in the end. And, and he actually, uh, People might remember, he, he confessed uh, to an undercover police officer in jail. He says he killed 49 women. Yeah. So that certainly may have been the, the worst mass murder in Canada's history. But there are some 
similarities here. That this is someone who is alleged to have um, targeted women who mm -hmm. are working in the sex industry, who, who has drugged them, confined them, allegedly taken them out to a rural property, um, assaulted and sexually assaulted. So the allegations uh, are very disturbing and the similarities mm -hmm. are very disturbing to what happened 20 years ago in BC. Yeah, this is um, just unbelievable when we look at the charges here right now. Two counts of forcible confinement, two counts of administering a noxious thing, sexual assault, two counts of sexual assault with a weapon, etc. cetera. Um, and this could, as you say, with the amount of uh, evidence so far that they have been able to collect, this is going to be a massive investigation and there could be much more to this. Um, a, an important and unfortunately extremely disturbing story, Tara. Appreciate you uh, giving us the update on it today. Tara Nelson, anchor, City of News at 6 in Calgary. We'll certainly be uh, revisiting this one at some point again soon, Tara. Thanks again. Angie, thank you.